Do you want to help strengthen this channel? It's easy. When making your purchases, use the provided links in the description of which we are affiliates. Every small gesture is very valuable to us. Some background. It is a fact that we have the most evolved neurological system compared to a worm, insect, bird, animal, anybody, anybody. But we also have a psychological process. Whatever your psychological process, your thought and emotion is only happening because of a certain amount of information that you gathered, isn't it? Oh, you think she's a wonderful person, so certain kind of thought. Oh, you think she's not nice, another kind of thought. Oh, you think this is somebody else. With all this information, whatever you have gathered, whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. The type of information you gathered determines the type of thought and type of emotion that you have, isn't it? This is one thing, if you teach human beings to understand your psychological process is entirely your drama. It's got nothing to do with reality, is it so? Your psychological drama has nothing to do with the reality here. Hundred people can be sitting here and everybody in their own psychological space and they're in hundred different worlds, they're not in this world. So, I have <laughs> an empty head, nothing. <laughs> So I'm in this world, <laughs> so because I'm only in this world, I'm paying attention to everything. I have nothing going in my head. If I sit in one place, you know, once in a way when I take a break, for five days if I close myself up, I don't have a single thought in my mind. I don't read, I don't watch television, I don't write, I don't do anything, I don't even look out of the window. Not a single thought in my mind. Because psychological process is just a small drama which has gotten magnified simply because you've gotten so identified with it. It's like this. People always come up to me and say, Sadhguru, I want to meditate, but the thoughts are coming. I ask them, see, I will teach you another kind of meditation where your kidney function will stop, your liver function will stop, your heart function will stop. Are you interested? No, no, no. Then what, you only you want your brain function to stop, why? See, when you sit and meditate, your kidney is functioning, liver is functioning, heart is functioning, you have no issue. Only if your brain functions, you have a problem. Yes? <laughs> why is that? Because you are not so identified with your kidney function, but you are super identified with your thought process and emotion. Because you're so identified with it, you think it's you, because of that, now it has obliterated your experience of life. Tell me in twenty-four hours time, how many moments are there beyond thought you looked at something? For most people there isn't a single moment, or some people have few moments. I have just a few moments of thought, <laughs> rest of the time I'm just like the sky <laughs> Simply that, just life. If you're just… are you life? <laughs> Tell me properly, are you really life? Yes, your life, isn't it? Because I'm life, I have a body, I have a thought, I have an emotion, I have a home, I have this, this, this and so many things, all accessories. But you're experiencing the accessories, but is there experience of life on a daily basis? You're misunderstanding your psychological drama as life, isn't it? Your psychological drama is your drama, maybe badly directed, but <laughs> See, when it's badly directed, people suffer it, when it's well directed, they enjoy it, isn't it? Hello? So your psychological drama is yours, you can play it, nothing wrong with it. 
It's like we start playing a game, we are on a tennis court. But somewhere, you hit the ball, you enjoy it, you hit the ball, you enjoy it. After some time, you keep with the racket down and go, isn't it? Right now with this game, you're not able to stop. Just imagine, suppose you pl started playing tennis and you can't stop, twenty-four hours. How you would suffer tennis? That's all that's happening right now. Your psychological process has become unstoppable. It's simply on and on and on. So the simplest solution for this is, don't try to stop it because you're not trying to stop kidneys and livers and heart and whatever else that's happening, you're all fine with that. Only with brain function you have a problem because of the identification you have. You have misunderstood your thought to be you, isn't it? Hmm? Whatever your thought is, you think it's you. But your thought is coming from a certain information that you gathered from outside, isn't it? If I wipe out all the memory in you, will you have a thought? No. It is only coming from the type of information you gathered. What type of information you gathered is not all by choice. If you walk in the street, everything that you see, hear, smell, taste and touch gets recorded in your mind. You can't help it. What goes into you as information is not all in your hands, isn't it so? Ninety percent is not in your hands, simply it's happening all the time because everything that you sense through five sense organs is just getting into you and recorded. There is no good, bad, ugly in this, it's just information. Now by your recognition, you say, oh this is nice and it becomes good. You say this is nasty and it becomes bad. You say this is horrible and then it becomes ugly. This is your doing, but information is simply pouring in and recorded. What you gather, whatever you gather, it can be yours, it cannot be you, isn't it? Hello? Yeah. I can say, this is my chair, but if I say this is me, you will think I've gone crazy, isn't it? Right now that's all that's happened. What you gather, you start thinking it is you. Let me go a little more basic. The body, this body, were you born like this? Now, you came like this and now you became this much. How did this happen? Just the food that you've eaten, isn't it? Or it's just the earth that we're walking upon which became food and now it's like this. Countless number of people like you and me have walked on this planet. They were also smart people. Where are they now? They're all topsoil. <coughs> so will this become? Yes or no? Unless your friends bury you real deep fearing that you may raise from the dead. <laughs> Otherwise, this will also become topsoil. Well, we don't want to go today, but inevitably we go, isn't it? So this is just the soil which turned into food, we consumed this food and made it into this body. Or is it true that this body is an accumulation over a period of time? Hello? It is. What you accumulate can be yours. Can it ever be you? Hmm? No. Whatever you accumulate, at the most you can claim it is mine. I will not dispute that right now, a day will come. But you cannot say it's me, isn't it? Whatever you accumulate can never ever be you. If this becomes a living experience for you, that what you have accumulated in the form of food and in the form of information, you clearly know this is not me, then you will become like me. Simply looking at life as it is, without in being influenced by anything, without being identified with anything, Simply, life. Is that true? Fundamentally, you're just a life. Then you gathered a certain body, so we called you a man. Then you gathered some kind of stuff in you, so we called you this, that and everything. But essentially, are you just life? 
And is that the most important thing right now, that you're alive right now is the most important thing in your life, is that so? Hello? Yes. But unfortunately, that's not in focus. Today, what I'm thinking has become more important than me being alive, isn't it? Hello? Yes. My little emotion has become more important than that I'm alive, alive right now. See, today morning sun came up on time. Hello? Yes? yes? Now, you're thinking it's uh, some... Okay, what about it? You know, uh, <clears throat> some time ago, we were flying a helicopter in Tennessee. It was a nice warm day. So, we pulled off the doors and we were flying a... flying a open helicopter because weather is good. We went up there and suddenly hit a cold front. All that happened is sun got really blocked out by cloud, so it became extremely cold. So cold, we had no control, you know, our hands are not steady on the control, so we decided to come down. As we're coming down, we're just debating, suppose sun doesn't come up tomorrow, what will happen? Maybe in three months this will happen, six months that will happen, we're just guessing. Then I just came and did a little bit of research. If sun does not come up tomorrow, in eighteen hours, everything that you know as life on this planet will be gone. Except a few microbial life deep down in the earth, everything else will be gone in eighteen hours' time. Just now I gave you a fantastic information. Sun came up on time today morning. I want to hear appropriate noises at least. <laughs> it's fantastic, it came up on time. And planet is spinning on time. You don't think it's good? No accidents in the solar system, one planet did not clash into another, all are sticking to their lanes. In the entire universe, not a single accident, everything is going fantastic in the universe and in the larger cosmos. But one nasty little thought is crawling in your head and it's a bad day. Everything in the cosmos is going great. One nasty little thought, ah, it's a bad day, isn't it? <laughs> the problem is we have lost perspective as to who we are. In this cosmos, this solar system is a speck, hmm? Yes or no? It's like a speck. Tomorrow morning if the entire solar system evaporates, nobody will notice it. In that speck, planet Earth is a micro speck. In that micro spec, Los Angeles is a super micro spec. In that, you are a big man. That's a serious problem. This is your psychological drama. Exaggerating things to a point where you think if you have one bad thought, the whole world is ruined. Because we have gotten identified with the thoughts that we generate, with the emotions that we create not understanding, it's our prerogative to create the kind of thought we want, the kind of emotion we want. If you created the kind of thought you want and the kind of emotion you want, would you not do the best sort of thoughts and the best kind of emotion that a human being is capable of? Yes or no? Yes. Then you would function at the peak of humanity. Right now, our own intelligence has turned against us. We don't need any external help, we're just doing fine by ourselves, <laughs> yes or no? Simply sitting, standing, rich, poor, every kind is suffering. You ask them, childhood, big problem, diaper problem, toddler, big problem, lot of mischief. Adolescence, oh my god, too many problems, middle age crisis, old age terrible. Tell me which time of your life is fantastic. The problem is not anywhere else. The problem is just that we have lost control over our psychological drama. Because the existential drama of life is not in our experience. Our psychological drama is like a cloud blo blocking up the sun. We don't experience life, we only experience thoughts, emotions, ideas, prejudices and all the rubbish that we can generate. Instead of living 
in the creator's creation. We are living in our own petty creation, that's the big thing. I didn't create anything, so I am here in this world. <laughs> the metric for with for which something goes from belief to knowledge is is the not written, knowledge I just want we're to talking it. about knowing right so let me just make the, a is, distinction between knowledge and knowing okay is the knowledge written, is an accumulated information i know this this and that by knowledge means i have accumulated information today everybody is knowledgeable about everything this doesn't mean to say they know it they know it through the phone screen everything in the universe but they don't know it by experience of anything. So knowing is by experience. I have two hands, is my knowing. I know it is there, all right? Even if I close my eyes, it's there. If you argue with me, it's there. It's there anyway. So belief is something else. Right now I know something, I do not know something. These are two facts of life. So, if you live in truth, you will know some things, you will not know some things. What you do not know, naturally your intelligence will want to know. You don't have to seek it consciously. The moment you see I do not know, your intelligence will start working. The in-between thing is, what you do not know, you want to believe and make yourself feel like you know it. And that's caused tremendous trouble to human beings, assuming things that they do not know. I think that's uh, one of the biggest problems we're facing right now in our country. I don't, I don't know how long you've been here, but um, I think it's safe to say America is probably the most divided it's ever been, especially with the pandemic going on. Well, you had a civil war, this is better than that. Yeah, it is better than that. <laughs> but I wonder how close we are to something like that happening. No. Like, like truth, truthfully, we... At least in time, everybody gets hot, it's okay. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I wanted to build off sure, of his, sure. his knowing versus believing. Uh, and I don't remember which school of thought, if it, if it was Plato or Aristotle, but um, do, do you believe that all knowledge comes from what is gathered by one of the sensory uh, uh, parts of life, by one of the senses? Is that your belief? You see something, you believe it. You smell something, you believe it. Or is there, a, or is there room for faith? Is there room for metaphysical understanding of, of certain things? Do you leave that open or do you have to experience it through one of the senses? See, uh, if you go by your sensory perception, Right now I touch this and I say, it's cool. No, I don't know what this is. Only because it's cooler than my body, I'm saying it's cool. If somebody else who is much cooler than me <laughs> touches this, they'll say this is warm. Yes or no? Yeah. So I'm saying, your experience of senses is a very relative experience. It's good enough for survival not good enough for knowing the nature of what it is. For survival process, you're seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, which is what you're saying, to go to the grocery store, all this is good enough. But if you want to know what it is, you cannot know through your senses. How do you know? I want to get into that. How do you find out what it really is beyond your senses? What's the, what's the practice that gets you there? <laughs> it's not about a practice, first of all, See, if you want to cross a border, first you must get to the border, isn't it? Right now you want to go to Mexico, you can't go from here, you must at least get to the border first. So if you want to know, this is why I started with the border, but uh, you went into something else. I said the border of your experience is sensations. If something comes and touches, it's a sensation. If you see something, it's a certain kind of sensation. If you smell something, it's a certain kind of sensation. Everything in your experience is sensation, it may not be sensational, but it is sensation, that is why we are calling them as sense organs. They create sensations in the system. These sensations are vital if you want to live in this world, if you want to survive in this world. Otherwise, you wouldn't know anything. Suppose you had no ears, eyes, nose, nothing. Would you know what is here? Nothing, isn't it? Total blank. You fall asleep, what is happening? Your heart is beating, your liver is functioning, kidneys are functioning, everything functioning. Now they're telling you even your brains are functioning. But you don't know a thing, simply because all the five gates of sensations have closed down, isn't it? So your experience of life is right now limited to sensory perception. And that is the reason all this confusion, because 
the nature of sensei, sensory perception is such, if you see this part of my hand, you cannot see this part of my hand, isn't it? So you always perceive everything in parts. Now with these parts, you are trying to make a whole. It doesn't work like that. Right now, people's understanding of what creation is, what existence is, is it's a trillion piece jigsaw. But they find three pieces, put it together and they form something and say, this is it, this is it, I believe this is what it is. You can believe whatever you want. If we work hard enough on you from your childhood, we can make you believe any damn thing in the universe. Just know this. Right. I agree with that. Is that a shortcoming of humanity? Is that is that is that because our brains have not developed to a point where we, we are no longer limited by what we see, feel, touch, smell, hear? Or is there a way to break that boundary and have you done it? See, uh, human brain, there's nothing deficient about it. The deficiency is people are trying to operate without using the user's manual. They don't know a damn thing about their brains. That is their problem because they have lots of beliefs. They have lots of beliefs and beliefs and beliefs, so they can't use their brains. But the moment you see, I do not know something, do you see your brain starts working in a certain way? I, I, th I think saying I don't know is one of the most powerful statements in the world. It starts the exploring immediately. It's through exploration. You have come to America. I'm saying, <laughs> isn't it? People came to America because of exploration, not because they believed. Nobody believed there was a land here. They thought they were going to India. Yesterday somebody asked me, what is... what is your experience <laughs> of, uh, uh, you know, that Columbus uh, landed in America and called the people here Indians? What do you think about it? How do you feel? I said, I'm glad he didn't land in India, but I'm sorry he landed here. <laughs> Talk about this uh, necessity for curiosity and, and this uh, I don't know or questioning. See, the... don't use the word curiosity. Okay. Curiosity is a very surface thing. Okay. But when you realize I do not know, there is a pain of not knowing. It, right, because... and it leads and it leads to that to that question, right? One of one of the things that I, uh, uh, some people use that aren't as uh, you know that don't sit on a, a meditation uh, system to get to that place of curiosity, sorry, to get to that place of questioning and not knowing and being open to looking at things in new Can ways. Can I supply some vocabulary? What's that? Seeking. Seeking, thank ah. you so much. Like I said, brand new to this. One thing some of these people use is uh, mind-altering drugs. Ayahuasca, psilocybin, surgic acid. What are your thoughts on, on getting to this, uh, to this place of understanding through alternate means? The uh, it's like you can jinx the brain to create all kinds of experiences. Just by strongly dreaming about it, you can do it actually. People do it. You can hypnotize somebody and make them go through all kinds of things. If you're only hunting for experiences, it's fine. But what I'm talking is not about hunting for experiences, a genuine exploration. If you put on a VR and sit here, you may go to Mars right now. But you've not gone to Mars, that's all I'm saying. So by making some chemical changes forcefully, by introducing something, whether it's of natural origi origin or it came from the back street of uh, something, it doesn't matter where it came from, you stimulate something chemically and an experience happened. If you... if you did it just one time and you... you use this as a way to understand that I'm capable of these ex experiences. You know, yesterday I was just doing the daily quote today morning. The quote was something like this, if I can repeat that. Uh, it is like, whatever was the most wonderful and the peak level of emotion or experience you had, Make that your baseline in your life, because you're capable of that, all right? You're capable of that, what you're capable of must happen. What you're not capable of will not happen, that's a different matter. What is... what you're capable... if you're level... if you're capable of a certain level of joy, that must be your baseline. Now you will explore what's beyond. Now most people think these peak experiences happen only when somebody loves me, only when I pop this pill, only when I smoke this stuff. This is a wrong way to do it. If you used it just once to understand that 
my body and my, uh, you know, experience is capable of reaching such a peak, and then you start living there, that's great. But every time you have to pop something and tomorrow you're sick, what's the point of that? So have your peace and happiness. I know I've, I've asked you all, what do you truly want, right? What, like, what do you truly want in this life? And we, in the 3D material world, are chasing a lot of things because of the feeling that it's going to give us, right? And so peace and happiness seems to be the answer amongst a lot of people that I ask. And I hear you talk about how peace should be the fundamental baseline foundation in which you live, not the highest aspiration. So if you could speak for people that don't have that peace currently within their life and want that to be the basis for their whole life, how can they do that? The, uh, this is the most unfortunate thing in the world, that most human beings just do not know how to be at ease. They're not even at ease, forget about joy, forget about blissfulness. There is no ease, they're all in this jangled state. And now they say, this is how human beings are, doctors say because that's their business, pharmaceutical companies say that's their business. See, for example, United States, we're here in USA, so let's take this as an example. This is the most affluent country on the planet right now. Why does an individual person or a society or a nation seek affluence? In the first stage of affluence, it's a choice of nourishment. I can eat what I want. If I'm hungry, why I'm thinking of money, why? Because if I have money, I can eat whatever I want. In the second level of affluence, it's the lifestyle. I can live the way I want, I can do things that I want to do. So now in the most affluent country where there is a choice of nourishment and a choice of lifestyles like nowhere else, why are you spending 3.25 trillion dollars as your health care? Something must be wrong with you. Hello? When you have a choice of nourishment and choice of lifestyle, why are you sick, I'm asking? 3.25 trillion dollars is more than India's budget, all right? annual budget for 1.2 billion people. So where do we go wrong? Well, that's what we are looking at. <laughs> no, it's not about greed. The problem is without understanding, if you do not know how this camera functions and you use it, I'll assure you this is going to break down in three days. Yes or no? One who knows it, they may use it for a lifetime. One who does not know it will break it in three days, yes or no? That's all you're doing. No, no, it's not about them. <laughs> you are in charge of your life, you don't know a thing about this. Because you think by fixing the outside world, everything will be okay. Because roads are done, bridges are done, airplanes are flying, you think everything is done. No, a human, ex human experience essentially happens from within you. Outside conducive atmospheres we want to create, that is there. See, it's like this. If... if you look at it, he articulated this in one way. Essentially, what is it that you want? You want pleasantness of the body. If body becomes pleasant, we call it health. Do you want it? So badly. Yes. If it becomes very... if it becomes very pleasant, we call it pleasure. If mind becomes pleasant, we call this peace. If it becomes very pleasant, we call this joy. If your emotions become pleasant, we call this love. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it compassion. If your very life energies become pleasant, we call this blissfulness. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it ecstasy. If your surroundings become pleasant, we call it success. Only to create your surroundings in a pleasant manner, you need the cooperation of all these people. But for pleasantness of body, pleasantness of mind, pleasantness of emotion and energy, it is one hundred percent your business, yes or no? So only to create pleasantness around us, we need... Uh, because there are many forces involved, we need help from them, we need cooperation from them. Otherwise, anybody can make it nasty right now. But what happens in your body, what happens in your mind, in your emotion and your energy is absolutely your business. If you take charge of this, creating pleasantness in the atmosphere, you're at least competent to do it. Otherwise, you're always at somebody else's mercy. Why everybody wants to meet the most wonderful person? Why? I'm asking you, why the hell are you not that wonderful person? Huh? Why are you looking for that wonderful person to mess them up? 
Andre Andre brought up something uh, which is is near and dear to me, and this is uh, this fight or quest for inner peace. And and I, I, I <laughs> you speak about this a little bit, and you speak about um, people's inability to to understand and 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 to not ask the right questions or to not seek properly. What are your thoughts on? underlying mental health conditions as a uh, as a combatant to people's ability to find that inner peace do you believe in in true mental health as scientifically diagnosed are you not a believer in it i'm not a believer or a disbeliever of anything i'm willing to look at every aspect of life as it is is that okay Everything's because you, okay. Who am no, I to say that it's not okay? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> because you're continuously coming back to belief, belief. Do you believe this? Do you believe that? I don't believe a damn thing, nor do I disbelieve anything. What happens when you die? <laughs> <laughs> do I want that to... laugh. Why, why are you making me die? Why don't you ask that question with what yourself? When, what happens when I die? <laughs> <laughs> some, <laughs> some things you know best only by experience. So you want me to die right here, right now? Come no, because you want us. to experience this it. This will get a lot of views, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and I won't do it. Uh, but seriously, do you, so you, you... Based on what you just said, technically you don't have a belief on what happens when you die, but surely... You think so? I ju I've just this year, in the month of February, I published a book called Death, which is on a top seller of selling list for the last ten months, continuously. The book is titled as Death, an Inside Story. It's only for those who shall die. Great, that's great gonna marketing. Be, that's gonna great be marketing. How could they Everybody's like, this book is for me. One hundred percent, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a great marketer, so <laughs> What happens when I die? Am I, well, I, well, maybe not me, but what, like, does one go to heaven? Well, which heaven you want to go? Because every religion has their own heaven. This is where it gets tricky. Now, now, See, now you've... I'll me. tell you, because you do not know what is in the heaven, let me describe it to you. Uh, in the Hindu heaven, food is very good. If you're a foodie, that's where you must be. In the other heaven, there are, uh, you know, long uh, white-gowned ladies floating in the sky. You like that means, you go there. That was nice. Well, I like food. In yeah. another place, <laughs> in another place you'll encounter virgin problems. If that's what you're looking for, you go there. But what do you have to do to go there? You got to die first. That's an important thing. When you die, depending on your culture, we will either bury you, burn you, cut you and throw you to the birds, do something with your body. Because this body is a piece of this planet. When your job is done, you must put it back. If you've not done anything eco-friendly, at least this much you must do, put the damn body back. Some people are talking about going to Mars with it, all right? <laughs> You must put it back, that is one sensible thing to do. I am telling everybody in United States, I know I will become very unpopular. Why are you wasting cutting a tree when a man dies? At least plant a tree here, because you make good manure. Have you seen those, uh, have you seen those sacks? <laughs> have you seen the series? Yes, I know. Tree there's, pots. There's these sacks yeah. you can place your body in yep. and a tree will grow. I know you don't need a sack also. In India, we just wrap them in a cloth with salt and everything and we put them there and plant a tree, all right? Yeah. I gotta ask you, is Mars out of play, like, in, in the way of, that you seek? I, why, how can I ask this question properly? Like, if I get buried on Mars, <laughs> is Mars uh, out of play? Your body material, unless you want to be exported to another planet, you this material you picked up from this planet, when your job is done, it's best to give it back, because it's just a loan. Well, the some girls... Mother, no, no, Mother Earth gave you this body, thinking that you will use it for your well-being, and put it back when your job is done. You want to steal it and run away somewhere. Well, some girl at Whole Foods once told me that I was just made of stardust. She was very convincing of it. She said, we're all just stardust. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she's wrong. <laughs> Wait, I... I guess what I'm getting at is this, like... No, I, let's, I, let's finish this. Okay. So, uh, 
These are all different offerings in the heaven, sure. but the, this thing is you must die first. When you die, we put your body here no matter what, in which form we put it, we put it somewhere, either in a sack or a box or a whatever, we put it here. So you went to heaven and you don't have a body. Now what do you do with good food and virgins, I'm asking? Oh, if you have no body, how could you take advantage of the good food and the virgins? I yes. thought just like your, it's like spirit food. Well, well, here's why this is tricky because say, <laughs> say you die at a very young age. Seriously, this is where I get confused. What goes to heaven? Your soul? Great. Is your soul? Is it which is soul, your, right or left? <laughs> the left soul on my shoe. <laughs> the, is it the soul? Say, say, unfortunate, something unfortunate happens. A five-year-old dies. Does the fi does the soul of the five-year-old go? to heaven or hell so as a five-year-old five soul? See, the, prob the, see, the problem is there is away. no... there is no line between what you know and do not know, that's why all this confusion. Right now, you do not know the nature of your existence, but you're talking about a soul because somebody told you so. I'm not questioning whether it's true or not. All I'm saying is you do not know. Hello? Somebody may be... something may be true. But you do not know, that's the important thing. Because unless it comes into your experience, it's not there, isn't it? See, right now, if I close my eyes and sit here and doze off, all these people don't exist because they're not in my experience, isn't it so? It's only what is in your experience which is true for you, rest you're just assuming. If you concretize your assumptions, that's called belief. So you, you say chase experiences? Are you afraid of dying? <laughs> Do I look like that? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you're a person who loves life. Uh, see, life is not my decision, life has happened to me, okay? If we were able to cause life, that's different, we didn't cause it. Something much bigger than us caused life for us. Now. It's your business to see that it happens at the highest point. Because you've been given an intelligence, you've been given a capability, you must see it happens at the highest point. When I say highest point, not in a social context, but within you, you must be at your peak. Otherwise, you're a wasted life. Can I, uh... Can I take you have concerns that you have to pay your Verizon's bill, so you go with a long face on the street. No! The, the thing is just this, right now the only and only and only thing that you have is life. Rest is all your assumption. Can I take a second to uh, get sort of personal? And um, Andre, you did a... Uh, someone brought it up at uh, your event. Um, the story of your wife was... It's not a story. The, the reality... Of, mm -hmm. of your wife and I don't know how to fathom what occurred but it's kind it kind of goes along what you were just talking about about living at the peak and on Saturday I heard you speak or Sunday I heard you speak and you talked about her having the desire to go at what she felt was her peak. Mm -hmm. And in meditation, correct me if I'm wrong, in meditation, she made the conscious decision to leave this planet. Is it a question or it's a statement? I'm trying to phrase Coming from someone, again, who's just gotten immersed in this world, having that level of, whether you want to call it enlightenment, connectedness, knowingness, seems unfathomable to me. See, uh, you're living in a culture where the only dream is to survive better than somebody else. In the last... Two hundred years, that's been the only dream, how to be better than everybody else, survive a little better, have a little more than everybody else. But you're also, right now you and me are sitting on a land where for people, the distinction between life and death was very thin. 
in their understanding and experience of life. The Native American people lived like this. I was amazed to see that only recently I discovered that they are talking about a doorway in on top of the head. They're saying there is a doorway. They call it by something of their own language, I... what? Okay. Kapavi, which is a doorway that you can open up and leave, it is through that life came and it is through that you can exit. This is a well-established science in India and there are any number of yogis who left their body like this sitting among people, announcing to everybody, today I will leave and just leave. Like taking off a pair of clothes? Huh? Like taking off a pair of clothes? Yes, of course, because you put this on. You put on the body, isn't it? Slowly over a period of time. If what you accumulate, if you can't put it down, are you stuck or no? Suppose you picked up this vessel and you cannot put it down, it's stuck to your hand. Is it a good thing? No. So similarly, you put on this body, it's stuck to you, you don't know how to keep it down. That's a terrible thing. That's what people are suffering right now, being stuck in their bodies. They don't know what to do. So, what Mahasamadhi means is, it's not that they left and went to another planet or something. They just dissolved as a person. There is no persona anymore. So it's a different dimension of life. I think this is too light and uncommitted atmosphere to debate or discuss such a thing. If you're interested, I will talk to you in a different kind of atmosphere where there would be better understanding. And above all, uh, I don't want to casually discuss my wife with a whole bunch of people who don't understand what it is. Who don't yeah, understand yeah, what it is. That's totally fair. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I feel like that um, can go over a lot of people's heads. Anyway, this question came up the other day also, it seems to be bothering all of you. Let me put it this way. Uh, the other day also somebody asked a question, I don't remember who, and they said, uh, like this, it happened, uh, will you not marry again? So I'm saying, I don't come from that kind of background. Uh, one person falls off, pick up another one tomorrow morning. I don't come from that kind of thing because life's melded in a certain way. And that person evolved to a point where I did not imagine that that person would evolve like that. Beyond my imagination, beyond my expectation, something was done, something that is considered so phenomenal and sacred in the entire uh, culture and in the yogic culture, it is always considered that way. So, when the atmosphere is like that, I don't want to sit and discuss my wife with all the people. Sure, right. I, I totally get it. It's, and I, I'm sorry if I overstepped any boundaries. I, I just, that whole thing is fascinating to me. And... Yeah, I think, um, you know, from, from religion to responsibility, from solace <laughs> to solution, I hear um, in these conversations, and I'm really curious with the privilege that we have right now in this gathering and with Logan's influence and the influence of many people that are watching this, they don't know where to begin. It seems like a lot. Um, and, it, and it goes over their head. And so... No, no, we, it's very easy to make it very clear where to begin. Uh, unless you hop in with in-between things like this. Right now, standing in the grocery queue is not even on his mind, all right? He's just throwing it because he thinks that is a philosophy which will counter everything. I want to tell you, I read my Mein Kampf when I was eleven, twelve, and I become a strong uh, activist when I'm just twelve, thirteen, and at fourteen, fifteen, I'm thinking of joining ar joining armed struggle. So it's not new to me that kind of logic, that kind of rhetoric, as if it's a solution for everything. Yes, intellectually, it looks like socialism, communism seems to be the ultimate solution. Please try it to enforce it and see what a mess it becomes. Go and see in other parts of the world where it's become an absolute mess, all right? So this is not because... this is not because I like something, you dislike something, it's not about that. Ultimately, when it comes to life, what really works for maximum number of people? That is the important thing, isn't it? Regardless of the <clears throat> success rate of communism or socialism or the grocery line way of thinking, 
right, that I'm stuck in or have not thought my way out of. Uh, it is the way of things in this world right now, in, in many places, maybe not so much in other places. Um, what is the reason for that? Is it the teaching of the parents? Is it the education system? Is it mostly religion? Who is the main uh, uh, perpetrator when it comes to set belief systems? And as opposed to giving us a starting point for creating new belief systems, how do you create a desire for the teachers of the next generation to look out, think outside the box? See, uh, for a long time, in the name of religion, in the name of philosophy, in the name of ideologies of variety of kind, all sorts of things have been promised. And all the promises are elsewhere, not here. I'm saying, because you're all continuously talking about belief, if you believe there is a better place than where we are right now, up there. Why are you not gone, I'm asking? Doesn't make sense to me. If you genuinely believe there's up there a better place than this, you should be gone, isn't it? Hello? Well, well based, based on the religions that people utilize to believe in this better place, we don't get to choose the day. The day is shown. You can chosen. choose the day. Hold on, you can choose the day, it's very simple. <laughs> well, I think it just speaks into what we were talking about earlier, right? If we really knew that there was something outside after we died, there was a heaven that we really knew, if we actually knew, then yeah, I would want to go right now. Yeah. But because it's, because it's a belief, uh, that becomes a difficulty. Yeah. I'd, li I'd like to hear George speak. Uh, that's, that's wrong. Uh, so like you said, life was given to us, so we're not allowed to take it. For example, I can't... I'll take my own life and I can't take Mike's life. So redeem the reward that the Lord has given to me at the end of my time when he has chosen my time, not me. Because I haven't gone through what Fine. he needs me to go through. Fine. Go through I, I agree with you. You have no... You or anybody has no right to take life, yours or somebody else's. That is a given, all right? But I'm saying, why is it that the idea of a better place than this has come is because right now people are suffering within themselves, all right? Why are they suffering? I want you to understand this, whether it's joy or suffering, essentially both of them are happening from within you, is that so? If it's happening from within you, what happens from within you, at least what happens from within you, must happen your way, isn't it? Very true. If it happens your way, would you be blissful or miserable? I wake up every single day blissful. Blissful, I would be Absolutely. Absolutely. Not presume, tell me, yeah, if you had yeah, a choice, yeah. would you make it pleasant or unpleasant for yourself? Pleasant. Pleasant. I'd pleasant. Go pleasant. Yes. <laughs> if you were feeling very pleasant, would you be always thinking of going to another place which is more pleasant? No. Right now, the entire human, this thing is set up on a better place somewhere else. So before, like, because a lot of people, if I say this, people are going to comment down below, okay, I'm sure you feel that your place is great. But coming from a 2005, like, five, George, where I'm working at a nine to five every single day, and I do have a boss to answer to, and I do have bills to pay, and I do have responsibilities that I do not want to take part of, I still found those days just as joyful as the situation I have now because I, have, I invited the Lord into my life. So, if you're saying, why don't you just go there now, I'm saying... No, I'm no, I'm not here. saying you should go there now. No, but you're saying... No, I'm not saying you're saying, but I'm saying yeah. if that was the, uh, the idea of like, if, okay, if there's a better place in heaven, why don't they just go now? Continue your journey of self-discovery and consciousness expansion with us. Share this video to inspire others to join us on this journey of personal growth.